Hey, hey, thank you for coming in. I'm One Unique Writer, author, motivational writer, blogger of OneUniqueWriter.com and founder of Selfie Up. And to Selfie Up just basically means to keep your self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-love up to the max, which brings me into what I am here to talk to you today about, which is part of investing in yourself and keeping your self-esteem and self-confidence and self-love healthy. And one way to do that is to establish boundaries. So that's what I'm here to talk to you today about. So just to give some background information about me, for many years, I allowed people to use and abuse me. And this was in romantic relationships, friends, family, on every single level, every type of relationship dynamic. As I reflect back, I realized that the reason that I allowed people to use and abuse me and the reason that I was over nurturing and over loved, <laughs> if we could say over love people, was because I was trying to compensate for something I didn't have within myself. I was trying to fill a hole and a gap with in myself. And I even recall saying, you know, telling people that the reason that I was as giving and you know, so nurturing and supportive, the reason that I was that way to such a great magnitude was because I didn't want other people to feel the pain and different unfortunate emotions that I felt. So I was basically trying to save other people. But what I didn't realize at the time, what I know now is that the whole bottom line about all of that in the way that I used to go about handling my relationships with people is that I didn't have the love that I needed to have for myself. And as a result, of course, I either I, I it was either that I didn't have any boundaries or that the boundaries were waving and, and, and too flexible. You know, back in the days, I pretty much was always focused on trying to help any and everybody. And also what's wrapped up in that is I was focused on trying to please people being an over the top people pleaser. However, situations, even with me going over and beyond situations rarely worked out with an ending of me actually being able to please other people. Because the thing about it is when you are trying so hard to please other people, nine times out of 10, somebody is not going to be pleased and that person is going to be you. Well, actually I'll say 10 10 out of 10 times, the main person that is not going to be pleased is you because you overlook yourself way too much in an attempt to please other people. So when you are doing just too much, somebody in the equation is not going to be happy. And again, it will be you, but also you'll go through doing all of this different stuff to try to please other people and they still won't be pleased either. So the whole thing is completely, it's just completely pointless. So anyway, after numerous situations, it became palpable that, I just couldn't make other people happy. It didn't matter what I did. If people are, the thing about it is if people are unhappy individually, you can't come along and change that. Happiness is a choice for all of us. Each one of us have to make our own adjustments and adequate changes in our own lives to create our own happiness. But nevertheless, I still tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried tried to please people. Anyway, what I learned, what I actually learned to divert the attention and energy from others to myself is that it's, it's like I started discovering, well, you know, I'm saying that wrong. When I learned to divert the energy and attention from other people to myself, 
it's like I started discovering an entire new world, basically focusing more on myself than on other people. And this is not being selfish. Some people, they will try to make you feel bad for yourself when you look out for yourself, but it is not, it's not a selfish thing. There's nothing wrong with you taking care of yourself. So like I was saying, I started discovering an entire an entire new world. And in addition, I developed a new level of confidence, insight, and outlook towards myself. I actually learned to put myself as the number one priority. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, I really didn't have a choice because I was tired of being last. And what I found is that when I became number one in my life, all of the using and abusing and all of that type of stuff was put to an abrupt halt. Now, I do want to say that there still have been like for particular relationships where I realized how I was given so much and wasn't getting anything in return. When I say that I put those things to a halt, I'm talking about after such a long period with with um you know the abuse and misuse and stuff occurring after so much time when I finally woke up I put it to a halt now what I also want to say is the practice of having to implement boundaries that has not stopped that's actually something where even when you identify certain relationships that you need to create boundaries Creating boundaries is something that you are going to have to do every single day going forward with every single relationship because you can't allow people into every room and every area of your home. Like right now, if you had company, let's say you have a business meeting at home, you work at home and these are people that you trust to come into your home. Well, you may invite them into your living room. Or your dining room table to sit down and discuss business, but you aren't necessarily going to invite them into your bedroom. So that's an example of the boundaries that we have to set for people. And it's also, I'll give you this analogy as well. It's like going into an office building or or even a bank. Well, no, I'll just say, well, I'll just keep it simple. It's like going into an office building and this is a place that you work. And you have a security card to gain access to the particular office, the particular area that you work in. But if you were to swipe that card to enter other certain doors, that card is not going to work. You are going to have limited access. And so that's how we have to do in our relationships with people. We can't just give people access to any and every area of our lives. So again, I put a halt to all of the using and abusing once I woke up and and recognized it, but implementing, implementing boundaries is something that I still continue to have to do. When you fall in love with yourself, you like, if you have a child, you will understand this completely. We fall in love with our kids And because we love them, we protect them by all means necessary. It's the very same thing. Once you really, really, really and truly fall in love with yourself, you will protect yourself from any and everybody. I don't care who it is. You won't be opening up doors to anybody easily just because you're dating them or just because uh, this person is supposed to be your friend. You know, people have to prove themselves to you, but even... Um, you know, it could be relatives to where you have to compartmentalize even those relationships and establish healthy boundaries there. But just getting back to me. So I have this journey that I'm telling you about, I began to love, nurture, support and encourage myself. And I started giving myself everything that I wanted, needed and hadn't even formally realized that I was missing. Now, of course, today, I still like to help other people. However, there is a line between being used and simply being of help to others. The love you have for yourself is what allots the vast difference between being used and merely helping others. 
So in addition, for, for the most part, because some people will still try you, but for the most part, I don't I don't attract the same type of people that I used to attract who were just complete users. For the most part, to be completely honest, the people who try to be the most um well, the relationships that are the most unhealthy where people try to use and take advantage, they are family members. And that's just because the truth of the matter is family, they just feel like they have the right to try you and try to push you because you're a family. So outside of that, I pretty much don't attract people who are overly needy. So I I pretty much don't have the issue of being used outside of family, but even with family, I've learned even when it hurts and even when I want to help, some people are manipulative. And so you you just you have to stay open to the truth <laughs> and reality. And I'll just be so honest right now. But now when I help other people, it's my choice. And it's not an out an obligation because that's the thing with family. They try to manipulate you into feeling like you are obligated to help them. But at some point, you you have to wake up. You really have to wake up and you have to get over titles because a title does not mean anything. A title does not give a person the right to disrespect you, use you, abuse you or anything of the sort. As for me, I only do what I can and I do not worry about what I cannot do. <clears throat> and so, I mean, it seems like I am addicted to helping people. So for people, if you are that type of person where there's something in you to where you just love to help other people, you love to encourage them, inspire them, motivate them, however it is that you love to help people, you really um are a person who needs to be very cognizant of the boundaries that you have with people and how you compartmentalize them and be very aware of the motives of other people as well so but the thing about it too though it may not be so much of having an addiction to helping other people but like me for myself, I am addicted to the feeling and the self-satisfaction that I receive from helping and motivating other people, especially when these other people are not expecting anything from me. It is way more satisfying to do something for a person where you just show up and do something and this person wasn't even expecting it versus somebody that's begging and, and you know this person is trying to take advantage of you. So when people don't ask anything from you <laughs> oddly enough it makes you want to do even more <clears throat> even more excuse me it makes you want to do even more for those people my thing of it is this though if anybody is going to use you it should be god that's my personal opinion i think you should let him use you and let you use your own self <laughs> Be there. What I mean by that is be there for yourself, encourage yourself, support yourself, believe in yourself, nurture yourself, definitely pamper yourself, (laughs) throw a party for yourself, take care of yourself. Bottom line, love yourself. And if you have to say yes to prove your love to somebody, then it is manipulation people will be okay with you saying no until you have to say no to them and then when you tell folks no and then they work hard to try to change your mind to me that's a sign of disrespect you should have to say no only one time unless the person is kind of special and delayed you know (laughs) but sometimes people will act like they are special and like they don't understand your no but a lot of times it's just a manipulation tactic to get you to change your mind and in those cases those type of people would typically say things like uh you must not love me or well just do it for me or just do it this one time or oh my lord well that's not being a christian (laughs) What or what if it was me, I would do it. (laughs) 
you know, people would try some of anything. But those statements like that are some of those people are being straight up manipulators. But in some cases, though, I think it really is a matter of it being that person's perspective and opinion. But whatever the case is, it is not a fact Nine times out of ten, I'm going to say it again, it's most likely manipulation. So you that's another reason why you got to have your discernment up with people. But establishing boundaries is very important. Even Jesus had boundaries. So don't let anybody make you feel bad for loving yourself and for doing what is best for you. We are called to love other people. However, we must include ourselves. If you don't set boundaries and standards, you'll be like a city with no walls, meaning anybody can run over and through you. And and then what good will you be? What, what good will you be then just letting people just run, just run wild? In addition to that, I would like to add, just talking about this manipulation thing in any situation, think about this. In any situation, I'm sure you can testify to this. In any situation or a relationship dynamic, when you pacify people and overlook the bad and unhealthy behavior, because we will do that to ourselves. We allow ourselves just to keep certain people around and make up excuses as to why we don't need to cut them off. Because in some cases, we don't need to just compartmentalize the relationship and let them in some doors but not others you know some people we need to kick out completely take back the security card and don't let them in at all so but that's for you to discern whether you need to establish certain type of boundaries and still allow that person some access or if you need to completely kick that person out of the city but so anyway when when we pacify and overlook bad and unhealthy behavior we are basically given a pass. That's basically a green light in our permission being given for people to continue the unhealthy behavior. Unfortunately, I know sometimes we want to give people chances and we wait around and we see seen in the process, we just get more and more hurt. But we cannot change anybody. We can't change anybody. We can express our thoughts, feelings, opinions, perspectives, and state facts. But if people choose not to change, then it's up to us to make a decision to stop trying to get them to change. Stop trying to wait around for them to to change. Just stop trying to get them to understand and accept you. We have to be willing to walk away or Create those strong boundaries. Again, you have to apply discernment and decide. So completely walking away or creating some very strong boundaries, whichever is your choice. But the bottom line to all of this is when it comes to establishing boundaries, because again, some people will try to make you feel guilty about it. That's just a manipulation tactic. You don't have to prove who you are. Or what love you have for anyone in these particular type of situations. You don't. You really don't even have to work to to prove it to God because he reads your heart. And if people can't tell who you are and what's in your heart, even when you say no. And they keep demanding a, a favor just, you know, for you to prove your love and all of that type of stuff. You need to pray about that affiliation and establish extreme boundaries away from it. Either, like I said before, maybe you need to kick them not just out of the building, but out of the city or very strong boundaries. God has blessed us with discernment and we definitely need to use it to um, we need to use it to discern people and their intentions. So we can compartmentalize and establish boundaries appropriately. So I'll end with saying this. Boundaries are very healthy. Make sure that you implement them. 
and I will talk to you all later. <laughs> Bye.